Hello, this is Dr. Snootopia, and this is Lovelution Village. Lovelution Village now is composed of one person. I'm sorry to say that, because I really want to create an eco-city. And all of my intellectual life, about 30 years, I've been having this vision of this city of love where people can come together in mystical sex and experience this ecstasy that goes along with a community of bliss. And what I mean by this is people are living out their true intentions. They have their inner life is acknowledged. They're talking about feelings. They're spontaneous. They are in love with life and they're just this natural bliss that happens when you are following your path to uh, this greater unity and that's what the village is all about so this vision that I've had has caused many problems but I see that there are other people that have this I mean many problems for me in terms of love relationships because I realize that in order to create this city it means a different relationship between the sexes because this isn't a patriarchal city it's not one in which uh, one sex dominates over the other it's a partnership society and there's been a lot written about that and that's what I wanted in my life and I moved to to Arizona to Arcasanti which is a community that is experimenting in ecological design called Arcology to live more fully that life it's a car free city which is a principle I want to embrace and it's a walkable city another principle I want to embrace and it's a place where the individual has their own room and there are all these public spaces in which they can share equipment so that's also something that I wanted to embrace so for all these reasons I kept on thinking Arcasanti I've got to at least try to live there and I did I lived there for a year and a half and after that I was expelled because I wanted more social justice and the authoritarian control of the place would allow. So since moving to Arcasanti and looking at the Arcology project, this idea is spreading throughout the, the world. And this is the city that's an Arcology in, that they're planning on building in Dubai. Whoops. And here's some more pictures of this city. It's called the Ziggurat uh, after the ancient pyramids in Samaria. So I am just so thrilled that this idea is going to take off because within an arcology, uh, the, the mode of transportation is uh, more running like your human body because we have a great system in our body that uh, circulates all her blood and nutrition and takes out waste and that's how a city should function like the human body and here's another picture of the this paradigm shift of the city uh, what this is is a new urban design paradigm and with that comes this new relationship of the sexes which is based on this erotic mysticism and inside the arcology you can see that it's all integrated it's a, a system that's a organism and it's organic and it uses all of our best knowledge in order to uh, make this system work and with the climate change talks that have been happening in Copenhagen over the last week I haven't heard a word about arcology and arcology uses a lot less space because it's dense and people share things so it's not the urban sprawl model that we're presently in that causes all of this conflict between people because it's the wrong paradigm to create social harmony and harmony with the cosmos it's not aligned with uh, long-term survival and what we need is long-term planning strategy and this is what 
I have been advocating because arcology would take several decades in order to build. The problem is now to get it in our heads that we need to build it. Another image of the biosphere too because that's a, a prototype arcology in, in a way as far as the greenhouses go because arcology if we uh, align it with sacred geometry that's why the the geometry is in front of that we'll be able to go and live on other planets because this is like the birth of baby biospheres uh, when we have all the fire biological kingdoms creating a recycling system uh, then we will be able to travel to other stars. And this is a picture of John Lennon and Yoko Ono because this is the model that I used. I grew up in the 60s. I was very impressed with them being able to uh, break stereotypes, gender stereotypes, and they're both artists and they're both creative people trying to find this love paradigm because I think the new urban paradigm also is the love paradigm and that's why I call it love evolution because it's this revolutionary uh, situation between the sexes in which the divine feminine is liberated and it's honored and it's and it's admired and it's trusted and it is seen for its wisdom its Sophia I just wrote a poem that you can read on my website called Sophia uh, because if we don't understand Sophia then we kill her we kill her we want her killed and that's what we're seeing now with all of the uh, budget cuts and with this wars continuing and uh, it's it's not just an institutional problem it's within our hearts it's a heart problem and I call this new relationship uh, that could create these baby biospheres the Gaia Messiah uh, this is what John Lennon and Yoko Ono were doing they were creating this Gaia Messiah and there are other couples on the planet that are doing the same thing And here are the baby biospheres coming out of the, uh, of the biosphere too. And unfortunately, this project doesn't seem to be functioning on the level that it needs to as far as, as um, incorporating human beings into the habitat. I, I, I think it's because um, it, it requires us to take a new look at who we are in our power relationships. And I just think it is um, something. I've been reading this book called Finding Your Soulmate. And in here, uh, there's different levels of soulmate. And what I wanted was the level of soulmate that worked together to create this unified vision of creating new cities and so that's a particular kind of soulmate coming together with that love paradigm uh, and changing the world and in order to change the world we have to know ourselves we have to reflect ourselves and then we have to change our behaviors to reflect uh, the new information that we're receiving inside of ourselves and for somebody to tell you that they're never going to change is a bad sign because uh, we're all changing and I think that we need to uh, change ourselves back to the source so that we can understand who we really are and you have the um, different value system around money you realize that money is used to create the new paradigm that's the only purpose of it really is to unify money and right now because of uh, in the capitalist system and everyone has their own bank account and own accounting system uh, that it is it corrupts relationships because it's not based on sharing it's based on greed it's based on I can get more money than you can and so therefore 
there's going to be this power really dynamic that's not going to be equal. And in the society that I see, where we get beyond money and we all have a joint bank account called the Earth Bank, as by Mr. Fuller called it, and then we have the computer help us distribute the wealth, we get back into the realm of the, the great goddess at the temples. They brought in the resources and then they fairly distributed things. And that's what needs to happen now. Uh, we need to realize that we want to have peace among people, then we need a new economic system. And it's based on uh, sharing. And it's not just like the nuclear family marriage where it's just the couple now that's sharing resources. It's going to be the community. It's the village concept again. It's the city. It's We're going to share these resources in the city. And that's how this uh, paradigm shift comes about. Tell you um, clarification, what we both want, and that's what it says in in this book that you need to uh, write down uh, what your goals are in a relationship, and that helps to overcome uh, traumas that happen uh, within your relationship, and how to overcome fears, and how to uh, adjust yourself to living together in peace. Uh, and how to share, and that's so important, how to share and how to have some justice. And with this relationship that I'm having trouble with, you know, there, there's, there's um, in, in relationships, there are things that uh, you don't know what to do about, like for us, like the tapes. There's these tapes involved, these videotapes, uh, when we we're unable to live together anymore. There's these videotapes that we did together that we were working uh, at, on a documentary about. And who owns the tapes, you know? I bought the tapes, I paid for all the trips, and we, but we worked on them together. You know, this was a, uh, a love child that we were having. And so what happens in these kind of relationships? Now the love child is going to die, right? Because there's no way that we can come together in order to um, make it happen uh, because of a lack of ability to be able to communicate about conflicts. And relationships that last are the ones that know how to overcome conflict peacefully using conflict resolution. Now we're in a trouble in capitalist cities because uh, the way the system works is that they're, we're based, it's based on nuclear families and so what happened to me in this uh, very abusive relationship was that it, um, I, di I didn't have any outside friends. And so, um, I just relied on this one person. Now see, I don't know right now like what I should reveal, what I shouldn't reveal. I know that we need to talk about issues of the heart. That's what I mostly want to do in my life. I want to talk about issues of the heart. And I'm scared to because there's all these legal things that happen. There are all these... Um, you have to be reserved in your talking. And I just hate this. I want to be able to write about my inner life. I want to be able to have a public relationship with my love. I want to be able to talk about my friends and even the rough moments. I want to be able to talk about that. I want to be able to reveal truth the way I see it. But in this society, there's so many things that people will sue you for, or you can't say this, or you can't reveal this, or you can't show that. It's all of this censorship. So then I find myself self-censoring. Uh, and I, I really don't know what to do. I, I, I want to know how to proceed in my life. So I'm going to go to Maui, Hawaii, uh, for Christmas because I don't have any family like I say I'm the love illusion of one and there's this raw food festival and it, th this is the only group that seems to be uh, receptive to what I'm saying and who I am uh, maybe and so you know if I can uh, find a culture that will accept 
me, maybe they'll want to listen to these ideas of building an ecological city, and they certainly need it because we don't have uh, uh, ecological cities uh, on the horizon unless we can find the culture in which to build it. There are a lot of good memories that I have, um, and that's what's so difficult about domestic violence, is that on one hand you have a lot of good images of uh, the person that you're with, and then you have all this other side, this shadow side, that you cannot deal with. And that's what's happened to me. You know, this partner that I had was very uh, supportive in many ways, but then I don't think I don't, I don't think you had the full heart, if you're listening to this. I don't think that you were totally with me. And I, needed to, uh, I need a partner that is totally with me uh, as a, um, a partner and who is a beloved and who has the same vision of creating the ecological cities of this union of oneness, of the one flesh, the one mind the one vision that makes it happen so that we can save the planet with a new architectural design. It's the blueprint within that we need so much. And we need to be able to communicate this in ways that allow us uh, peace. Because this is the way to peace. You can't have peace without love. That's why it's the 60s they said, peace and love. The revolution was in our hearts. That's where it is. And that's what I'm appealing to you uh, to try to figure out what to do and then how to save the baby of the tapes. You know, what to do about that. In healthy relationships, you grow. There's a community. That's what those flowers represent to me, the lotus flowers, is that we have this individuality and it will, it, it needs to be able to grow. And that's what I wanted to do with my partner is I wanted to help him uh, manifest his dream. And that's why we went into video. That's why we did the documentary or started it at least. And now it needs to be edited. So if anybody's got any ideas of what to do and why I needed to be involved with this is because I was going to write the narrative. If we're going to have a feminist uh, love-illusion, then it has to be a woman's voice in it. It has to be this um, partnership that makes this new vision happen. And that's why this, uh, the divine feminine, like I said, is so important because... Um, it has been uh, suppressed and it has been killed many times before in history. Again, you know, I, I don't want to have seven years that just goes to waste, that everything we did is no good because it, the, of the lack of the erotic, uh, mystical uh, reality of the two becoming one world philosophy. And it is the hero's journey. It, I've realized that and you know, you have to have a lot of heart because it takes courage to make the love illusion happen. And it, it takes dedication to create nonprofit organizations that other people can join and that you can create the money necessary in order to uh, make a snowball effect that there's so many people that want to live in this kind of world reality of the arcology. So I don't know. I just want to find my beloved soulmate. I want to know what to do to, to do that, you know, to do that. How do I go about finding my true love? I'm, I'm not a young person, and I been struggling with this all my life and maybe it's been lifetimes of trying to find the right union uh, to be able to create the utopian image that's true, sincere, beautiful and based on uh, just the holiest of holies. Because these images of domestic violence just are unacceptable and um, so you can see that I'm really struggling with trying to find the love image to get over war and to 
in the battle of the sexes. And that's uh, most important because if we can't find a way to overcome the battle of the sexes, then what possibility can we have uh, for world peace? Uh, there is none. There is none. Uh, so this planet has got to find the appropriate uh, design in order for everyone to be happy in their own individual individuality. And everyone needs their creative space to be able to do their own thing. And that own thing has got to connect with the greater good of everybody else.